Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're going to finish up the three remaining matches in this league and uh, see how we do. No changes to the deck. We did add Outpost Siege if you're not caught up on that. And we added another Radiant Flames to the sideboard, but everything else is the same. Some people have suggested that, um, well, a few things. They, I saw a suggestion for collateral damage, so I might try that out. I feel like as soon as I take out these roasts from a couple of these roasts from main deck, I'm going to start playing a bunch of Abzan aggro, and then I'm going to regret it. But I think the argument for collateral damage being it's good with Hanger Backwalker is yeah, actually kind of legit. I don't mind that, so I'm willing to try it. Um, and then other people saying, a, a few people, like three people saying I sideboard out Ghostfire Blade too much. So, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll try leaving a, a couple in. See, the problem with, I, I feel uncomfortable siding out creatures and leaving in Ghostfire Blades. Because I feel like I'm just going to end up with like a bunch of Ghostfire Blades and no creatures. And that wouldn't be any good. But... Maybe they're right. I don't know. Another thing was uh, the decks running Coligan's Command. I feel like I get harshly two for one when I play my Ghostfire Blade and they like blow that up. And uh, even if it's just blowing that up on a Thopter token, it hurts pretty bad. But maybe, I don't know. Maybe people are right and I'm sideboarding it out too much. We'll see. Uh, and then another suggestion I might try Outpost Siege uh, in sideboard first and then sideboard into it as necessary but we'll see uh i do i mean i understand the argument that you're using it for dragons most of the time but i mean let's be honest you're, you're gonna want to use cons every once in a while i think most decks use cons more often it's just that this deck really can utilize dragons well um, all right let's do some matches here let's see if we can keep this trend of this deck uh crushing and doing awesome alive and well. All right, we'll see you in a sec. All right, we're in our first match of the day. This is definitely a keep. Pretty nice looking hand. Some removal. We've got a turn two hanger back walker. We have our one of Chief of the Foundry, which I might up to two, um, especially if I sideboard out or move Outpost Siege to sideboard. I think adding one more Chief of the Foundry is probably not too bad. Okay. Perhaps we're playing against Eldrazi, which is probably our most favorable matchup. That was an excellent draw, by the way. So if he plays a ramp spell, I'll kill it. Yeah, it looks like we're playing Eldrazi. That's fine. So, oh, well, Hanger Back Walker is going to be just fine. We're not going to not gonna mess with that. All right, let's get... Well, this is interesting. No, I th we still got to just play Hanger Backwalker of our own here. Although, I don't think Hanger Backwalker is fantastic in this matchup. I still think it's fine. But it's not, like, as good as it is in other matchups. I think it really shines in matchups where your opponent has a little bit more of an aggressive thing going. Okay. This is another matchup where the main deck roasts, I think, come up pretty big. Um, I could trade here. I No, I think we take it. He's not going to be able to erase us damage-wise. I think that's really more of our department here. So, Vile Aggregate is kind of nice. This is interesting. So, he's going to be at Whisperwood Elemental next turn. The question is, do I want to play Swiftwater Cliffs, leave up Wild Slash, and Pumping Hanger back? That guarantees I can play P and Kirin Alar next turn. Um, yeah, it's it's a question. It's a question. Doctor Engineer is quite good, too. Sets me up if I draw really well with the P and Kirin Alar, as well as the Chief of the Foundry. Hmm. Interesting dilemma to have. Vile Aggregate is so good, too. I think we're going to go... I think we're going to go Thopter Engineer. The reason being, if I draw that land and I get to play P and Kirin and give the haste, I actually think that's just really good.
The untapped land here is just really powerful. And even if I don't get the untapped land, I get to play Chief of the Foundry and keep the beats going from above, which I think is still really good. We've got the Ugin protection, Whisperwood as expected. All right, untapped land would be great. Didn't get it, but that's okay. So, options. We can go, I guess, well, we definitely go cliffs. Um, we can go aggregate, which actually keeps the Whisperwood back. Um, but if I play Chief of the Foundry next turn, I get to go P and Cure Nalar and bash from above for six, which I think has just got to be better. So let's go Chief here. And actually, the Hangerback Walker keeps his Whisperwood back. If he wants to attack into my Hangerback and give me another two-power attacker, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. So we'll get some more damage through. Next turn, we get P and Kieran Alarm. We get to swing for six. From above, which is really good. Otherwise, we could play the Whirler Rogue, and we actually can make... No, I guess we can't really make anything unblockable. All right. So, Ugin is super beatable. And if he attacks with Whisperwood, I am going to block. I At this point, I just want my... I want to get some extra attacks in. No attacks. So, he doesn't even want us to get the... Extra dude there. On tap land here would actually be really nice too. Because we could play P and Kieran Alar and still pump Hanger Backwalker. And then we can throw it at our opponent and get to Hasty in. Which is just really good. Okay, did get the untapped land, which is good news. So we're just going to play Pia and Kirin. Going to do some death from above here. So we can definitely beat... We can beat Eldrazi, but he is going to be able to kill our Chief of the Foundry. It's still okay. He's, I mean, he's very dead next turn, so he's got to do something pretty sexy here. So he's got to play Ulamog. He's got to remove Hangerback and Chief of the Foundry. So he did have Ulamog on, on point here. So he's going to take out Chief of the Foundry and P and Kirinalar, which is interesting. Okay. Leaving us Chief of the Foundry is probably still pretty good for us. Okay, this is actually fine, too. So, the plan is block here, prevent some damage, pump hanger back. Guess I could have gotten a manifest off the board instead of preventing damage, but this is fine. So we get two more dudes. Gets to manifest, fine. I think we're gonna, I still think we're gonna steal this game. Okay, Drew Land. So we're up to six mana. Yeah, we're just going to play Whirler Rogue here. So we're actually one damage short of killing him right now. Because we've got the Wild Slash. Um, how careful do I have to be? I think I have to be fairly careful. If my opponent has another Ulamog, could they kill me? Four, six, eight, ten. I was thinking if they play another Ulamog, they can exile 
if I attack with everything but my my these two guys, my opponent plays another Ulamog, I guess they can't deal lethal. They could deal 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 damage. So maybe it is better to just attack with all the Thopters. And I guess I have the Wild Slash too. Um, Alright, I think we're going to attack with... Well, how much different is it if I only attack with six Thopters? I think that's still fine. Let's just be a little bit careful. I'm not sure why I'm being so careful, but... I'm going to be this careful, I think. I just think we're likely to be able to seal this being this careful, especially with the Wild Slash in hand. Okay, so swinging with everything. We mill 20, or exile 20, not mill, exile 20. And we're going to go in full-fledged damage prevention mode. So block here, block. No, I guess I can still do this pretty safely. Four, six, eight. Even if this were an Ulamog, we'd only take 16, which is not lethal. So, yeah. Although, if it was Ulamog, well, yeah, it wouldn't make that much sense anyway. Okay, this is fine. I kind of want to keep my Thopter Engineer alive. Even if my opponent has Ugin, that's not good enough. It was, it was an Ulamog, wow. The one I traded with. Guess I guessed correctly here. Okay, so opponent's got to do something pretty sexy here. Ugin's not going to do it. Another Ulamog does not do it either. Foil Ulamog, by the way. Some pretty good value. No ramp creatures seen by our opponents there, by the way. Uh, so Lumbering Falls and Yamakos. Got it. Okay. So we want to keep the roasts in. See, this is one of those matches where people would probably say I'm, I shouldn't sideboard out of Ghostfire Blade. Um, yeah, maybe you're right. You know, Vile Aggregate maybe doesn't seem that great in here. Basically, anything that doesn't fly, I don't really like in this matchup. I think Outpost Siege is one of those things that's probably too slow as well. Probably. Right? Like, even Dragon's Mode... I'm flying over top, so Dragon's Mode is, like, irrelevant, except on Chump Blocks. And if I'm in Chump Blocks against this deck, I don't really like... I don't like where I'm at anyway with that, I don't think. But we want to bring in the Disdainful Strokes, because I think that's... I just think that's good. Hanger Back is good on Blocks, but basically, like I said, anything that doesn't fly, I don't particularly like... I want to keep the Rose. Maybe I can drop a couple Wild Slashes instead. I like that Wild Slash can burn face. Rose deals with Drowner of Hope and Whisperwood Elemental. And I guess the... Yeah, we're going to drop a couple Wild Slashes, I think. Taking out Whisperwood still seems good to me. Let's take out the Outpost Sieges, too, I think. So drop a couple Wild Slashes, a couple Outpost Sieges. We're still left with a couple Wild Slashes that can either burn early Rampers or burn face. And Rose, which deal with like most of the important creatures in my opponent's deck. We're going to try keeping the Ghostfire Blades here because they still seem really good with all of our flyers. Like, just a good way to race. All right. I'm okay with this. Um, the problem with Disdainful Stroke on Ulamog is that Ulamog still gets to exile two things, but I still think I can beat... I mean, preventing him from getting a 10-10 is pretty huge. Tintin indestructible, no less. Although we can chump block Ulamog for... Well, 
I guess it doesn't matter if you can chump block him for days. You only get, like, two turns before he just mills you out. So, yeah, Disdainful Stroke is still pretty hot here, I think. All right, well, let's try this. I'm going to try the suggestion of leaving in the Ghost Fire Blades. And we'll just drop the Outpost Sieges because the reasons I said. And a couple Wild Slashes because I don't actually think burning his early ramp is important is as important as I think it is and even if it is we have the roasts for them anyway so let's let's do it like this okay I actually think this hand is a keep um, just the fact that we've got Blade into Hanger back, I think makes it likely good enough. It is a land-heavy hand, but we're on the draw, and the fact that we have a turn one and turn two play, I think makes this worth it. There's a lot of really solid top decks we can get now, especially with the Ghost Fire Blade, where I think this hand is likely going to be good enough. Yeah, like that. Like that, for example. For example, P and Kieran Nalar. Okay, Leaf Gilder. All right, Morph, which is Rattleclaw Mystic. Um, ooh, that's kind of interesting. Why does my opponent want to make that trade? I guess we don't really want to because of hanger back value. Okay. A little bit land heavy here. No problem, though. No problem yet. All right, let's equip and pass. So my opponent can play, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess he can play Ugin. On turn four. Or wait. No, you have to pay the two. So three, four, five, six, seven drop. All right. So opponent can play like a, a Drowner of Hope. Or a Whisperwood. Whisperwood is more beatable, I think. All right, so we don't have we don't have much gas, but we did get in a pretty important piece of gas here, so we're still okay. All right, opponent's gonna get to manifest. We're gonna pump hanger back, play P and cure Nalar, and pass again. Which is going to at least prevent our opponent from attacking with Whisperwood, but it also is going to set our opponent up for what next turn? One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six mana out. Okay, P possibly seven. All right, another land there is not the best, but the fact that we still have P and Cure and Alarm means we're in good shape still. All right, now we pass. Next turn, I'm going to get to pump hanger back and launch it at something. Feed the clan. Now, that's an interesting sideboard choice. I guess it does buy you time. That's the first time I've seen that sideboard strategy against us. I don't think it's, I mean, I don't think it's that great. Going all in. That's interesting. Um, let's just 
think the plan is just eat his rampers. And if he wants to sack Whisperwood, so be it. No play. That's fascinating. Hmm. Another land there is a bit awkward, but I guess we do have Foundry the Councils at some point. So, what's the plan? I think we just start getting some damage in here. Equip. Swing. Then we re-equip and pass. Actually, no, this is still fine. Now our opponent can't really attack. I'm not going to get to pump hanger back, though, and throw it, so that might have been wrong. All right, there's a drowner. Hmm. Stainful stroke. Well, we'll see. We shall see. So let's say quip blade to thopter. Swing with thopter. Guess my opponent can. I shouldn't have equipped, I guess. Hmm. Well. Maybe I do keep back, actually. Hmm. All right. I think we have to do it like this. Which I know seems problematic, but. It's a bit of a, oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to do that in response. Still nets us dudes. Hmm. One card left in our opponent's hand. So I think we probably have to deal with the Whisperwood, which means... Which means what? Probably means block Whisperwood, throw a hanger back at it. Or, no, conversely, I think we throw a hanger back at it, double block it, and then block a manifest, but then we take five, seven, nine, ten. It's a lot of damage, but we'll end up with some things and get this off the board, which I think is better. All right, so we throw hanger back at that.
And then we double block here. I think we block here. But let's see. Five, seven, nine, ten. Yeah. If either of these manifests or something, I could be in big trouble. I think we just jump here to play it a bit safe. Wasn't expecting that. I'm pretty surprised my opponent's running winds of Calcisma. To be honest. Um, the fact that my opponent just had sort of a blowout play with that is pretty shocking, actually. While we draw all of the... Uh, yeah, that's not, uh, that's not ideal. Um, wow. All right. I guess I'm losing here surprisingly um but we didn't see any roasts too which i think is a pretty big deal that's my excuse for why we're losing um yeah i guess we're dead can't do anything about it it's pretty surprising Pretty surprised. Not attacking with the Whisperwood now. Okay. That's interesting, too. So, what is the plan? Tapping that. Well, I can launch two things. So, I guess I probably have to do that. I think we're just going to die to a manifest, but... I guess the plan is... Block... Chump... Probably have to kill Whisperwood, which I don't love. I think we might need the chump blocker more. Hmm. So if I go land. I just am one mana short of Chief plus Foundry of the Councils, which definitely means we're dead. All right. Surprising loss. Definitely surprising. But like I said, we saw no roast this game. I think that's really the difference here. And seeing Disdainful Strokes after your opponent's already played Whisperwood and Drowner of Hope, turns out it's not that good. So I could bring in Radiant Flames for all the manifests, but that just seems like a waste too. All right. Surprising loss. Definitely surprising loss. Lost. Definitely a surprising loss. Uh, all right. It's Captain Ugin, which I guess still kind of makes sense, but... All right. Um, I still think what we have is correct, although that was one of those games where Ghostfire Blade didn't really do that much. Did it? I don't know. I think we keep it the same. We saw, Like I said, we saw no roasts. I think that's pretty big. We just basically need to fly over top. 
It was, I guess, a questionable keep. Yeah, although we saw like most of the goods. We just drew too many lands. Um, yeah, I gotta keep this, but this hand could be a problem. We do need to actually draw lands. If we do draw lands, this hand gets a lot better. All right. Next turn's a big turn. All right. We're in trouble now. So, still think it was a keep, but we got punished. We did get punished. I think I just disdainful stroke explosive because... Now if I draw a land, I want to play Aggregate. And we got to slow our opponent down. So definitely want to draw a land here. There we go. Let's play Aggregate now. So now I'm much happier I played the Disdainful Stroke. It possibly slows our opponent down. Since I wouldn't have been able to counter the Whisperwood here anyway. Or the Rattleclaw Mystic. Okay. Hanger back. No, I guess we go aggregate number two. Swing for two. Ingest explosive vegetation. Okay. All right. Drowner is still beatable. Can't really attack us. We did get a land, so we get to go Whirler Rogue. And we get to make a aggregate unblockable. Actually, we get to make both of our aggregates unblockable here. That's fine. We're going to make this one unblockable too, though. Is that going to be a problem? My opponent can swing for 5, 7, 9, 11 back, but then I can still think that's... Hmm. Well, let's let, let's let this resolve first, I guess. So tap that. The question is, do I want to attack with my other aggregate? I guess either way, he can swing with the Drowner. Let's just make aggregate unblockable anyway, I think. I think this is still fine. You can tap them both. I'm okay with that. Right, he's busting it. That's fine. It's actually fine. So now we pass. And this is not really an issue. So you can unmorph this. Three, four, five, six. You could play another Drowner. He's going to flip Nyssa too, right? I can beat Nyssa though. All right, what is the attacking plan? Since my guys have Trample, I feel like I'm a little bit less concerned about 
trading here. Like Whirly Rogue for a morph. Since. But if he attack, it depends on. Okay, he is attacking with the Drowner, which I think makes me actually want to trade with the Rattle Claw here. Because, like I said, these having Trample is just like huge. Just huge. I don't know why I keep the Leaf Gilder back, though. All right, we're going to trade off the Rattle Claw for that and take seven. I don't really care about Whirly Rogue dying here as much. I don't think that's a, a big deal at all. So I think my opponent probably has the winds of Calcisma again or whatever. But whatever. So equip a couple blades. I think we're just going to swing with these two. We're going to keep our Thopters back because I anticipate him having wins. Although he didn't. All right. Hanger back and Whisperwood. Well, those are good things to get rid of. All right. Nissa, not a huge deal. Pilgrimage, nothing to worry about. Even if opponent plays Ulamog, you have to get rid of the Vile Aggregates, which means you can't. Okay, well, even flubbing on lands, we still beat the Eldrazi deck. So this matchup is just so skewed towards us that we can actually miss, even when our opponent's got a pretty good turn progression, and still get there. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad we could get the victory again um, in this match. Very nice. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next round.